What's up, Wargamers? Welcome back to World of Wargaming. I'm Isaiah, and today we're going to be playing a game of pre... kind of prehistoric hunting fun. We're going to be playing Tusk. We're going to be playing not the, the normal caveman and mammoth version, but we'll talk about that more in just a second. If you haven't considered smashing the buttons or check out any of the links in the description, please do, as it really does help out the process. And then let's go look at the table, talk about the scenario, and try to get through this game with making as few mistakes as possible and hopefully catching all the mistakes that I do make. Let's go play some Tusk. What's up, friends? Welcome to the wonderful world of Tusk. Now, we're not starting off with the cavemen as my cavemen have only recently arrived and I'm still in the process of getting them into the painting queue. However, the rule book does provide rules for hunting with a Victorian party, which for all intents and purposes is not that much different than a modern party because firearms are firearms as far as this game is concerned. So in this scenario, I'm, I'm kind of tweaking a little bit, which is great because the game allows for that pretty easily. There aren't a lot of scenarios in the book. So if you want to get good replayability, eventually you're going to have to come up with some of your own. The first, the solo scenario that comes for the Victorians is a trapping scenario, and it calls for Brontosauruses or Brontosauri, which I don't have at the moment. However, I do have... A, basically a T-Rex. Now, so what's going on here is these guys have gotten lost on an expedition through South America, just kind of a, was supposed to be a fun trip, and now they have stumbled through a portal into a lost world where there are dinosaurs and scary lizard people riding said dinosaurs. That's going in the middle. I'm using the basic hunt mission from the, which is the first solo for the, using the cavemen, but it should work just fine. He starts in the middle of the board. I can choose any edge. I've chosen the southern edge, and we're going to get into it. So the first thing that happens in a turn is fire progresses. There is, however, currently no fire on the board. Also worth mentioning that in with the Victorians, you get 12 points to spend on your party. So my party consists of an adventurer, a stalwart, and then two rabble. As we currently have no fire to progress, we'll go to action points. So we roll a d6. If there were more than one players, everybody would roll their own d6. And that is the number of action points that we have for the turn. So I can activate two of my bases. When they activate, they will move five inches. If you're playing at the regular six or 15 millimeter scale, it would be five centimeters. As I'm playing at 28 millimeter, I just switch the centimeters for inches and everything works beautifully. So I'm going to be moving both my adventurer on the left and my stalwart who was beside her to right there. After that movement, I would then, if I had anybody who could shoot, they would do so. As I do not, it will go to the Tyrannosaurus. Sort that out, we come to the chart. And we start by going across the top until we find one that fits. For us, it's going to be humans more than 12 centimeters away. So we're going to roll a d6, getting a 2. The G is for graze. But before we do that, I forgot to do something at the beginning of the turn, and that is to determine the wind direction. Now, the book says to use directional dice, which I assume mean like old school scatter dice. I don't have any of those laying around, so I'm going to use this D10, and whichever way the tip is pointing, that's going to be the direction of the wind. So I'm going to set my little compass here, and that wind is going to blow right there. Now, if you don't have anything like that, you could obviously use whatever you want, but this was a gift for my buddy Mike. It's for boat games, but this seems a perfect time to use it. So wind is blowing this way, which means the T-Rex will graze one inch in that direction ending there it then wraps back around to me we still have no fire and we need to roll again for our wind see if it changes direction so now our wind is going to go a little bit southwest so we're sh shifting directions on us oh my action points getting two again that's just the number apparently we're gonna do some more moves on these two get a little bit more positioning moving around like so each of them will then take a shot at the T-Rex. So when we take the shot, we roll 2d6, 
guns will kill on a 10, 11, or 12. I kind of hope I don't kill it here. So, technically right there, the beast is dead. I have won the game. We're going to, however, continue playing for at least a couple of more turns to try to get into some of the other stuff that can happen. I, um... I shouldn't have said anything. If I hadn't said anything, I'd have rolled the opposite of that, which would have been Snake Eyes, of We're course. On fantasy turn, he's going to take a shot, too. So, again, geez louise. I should probably stop now while I'm ahead, because this thing's about to get in here and eviscerate me, but that's okay, because we want to show off as much of the game as we can. But, again, that would be a dead beast. So, we then return to our chart, and in this situation, missile combat is going to be the first column that we get to that applies. So, we're going to roll our D6. A six, it will F, which is flee, I think. In that situation, the beast will flee directly away from the closest hunter, and it will move its maximum movement, which for a T-Rex is eight inches or eight centimeters if you're playing the regular scale. Boy's gonna start here. He's gonna stop there because they were not prepared for our guns. They're out here with spears and albeit giant dinosaurs, but still good old american firepower now as you may have noticed i have two more action points than i do members of my party you can spend one extra action point on a unit to give it one extra movement of five inches or you can use an action point to light a fire i'm probably gonna do a, a few of those things but you can only light a fire if that character did not move during its activation Mostly going to be using that to move. I want to get my rabble up the board. So we're going to spend two action points on each of them to get them pushed up the board. So right there. I'm going to spend two on my adventurer to send her around on a flanking mission. They're pressing through the bush. And one on our stalwart companion to right there. So again, rolling in the enemies within 12 column. Six, I think, is an attack. It is. Attack for the beast is a full movement directly towards the closest human or dog base. No dogs here, just humans. Ending here, right in my face. Uh, next turn, wind shifts a little bit back, back towards the south. I have three action points. Which I'm going to think about for a second. Move our leader towards the mountain or the rock formation with the T-Rex. I'm going to move up both of our rabble. Stopping there. Our other friend's going to do some shooting. So we're going to start with our stalwart. So dead. Not nothing. Just a miss. And then our fearless leader. It's another dead dinosaur. I'm not, I'm not going to win until I've done some melee stuff. So I think we're about to get to that. Jeez. Right now we are on the first column for the beast, which is, oh nope, sorry, that's fire. Nope, 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 sorry. We're still on the missile combat one. So let's roll. Two will attack. Now this part of the rules does get a little bit murky after how I kind of had it explained to me by Bill who kind of explained it where the attack result just gets you into movement for stompy range um, the way close combat would work is just if after you do your roll if there is a hunter within two centimeters the beast will roll 2d6 and if it gets an eight or higher a randomly determined model within two centimeters or base gets eaten in our case. Stomped if you're playing a mammoth, eaten if you're playing a T-Rex. Uh, so the beast gets a four. So it doesn't manage to eat anyone yet. Wind shifts to the north and I have six action points. Nobody needs to move. So most of my action points look like they're going to be getting, or the action point that I am going to spend is going to be to light a fire just going to start a fire right here on the edge of this outcropping you place your for me uh, two and a half by two and a half inch square anywhere adjacent to the base of the model 
and then that one is on fire. Over here, we're gonna do some swinging. So our friends, the rabble, need 12s. They need boxcars to kill the beast. No for the first one, opposite of boxcars. And no for the second one. Dalwork can still shoot. He misses as well. We will then go to the beast, who is now in close combat, so we'll roll further up the chart. I only need one dice. Getting the six, though. Getting a withdrawal. So it will move half movement, so that's four inches, away from nearest human and fire. So I don't think it would go this way, because that would put it closer to the fire. So it will flee this way, ending there. So at that point, we get a slight shift to the west, but still going northwest for the wind. We place a new fire marker adjacent to the existing one in the direction of the wind, and then we roll a d6. Ooh, the d6, getting a six. Check our chart. The fire will spread. Place one additional marker adjacent to the existing fire marker in the direction of terminal. So maybe you roll on the chart before you do all that thing to see what happens. Also, let me back up because I messed up in placing the original fire. I was supposed to roll a dice. Luckily, it would have succeeded because you need a five or a six. So luckily, the dice were with me and I'm not just doing it for demonstration purposes. So on that six, that fire will spread to the new tile. The original tile goes out. I don't remember how many action dice I said I had and I moved the dice. So I'm gonna roll that again. Okay. Four. The rabble will then each single move up into contact with the T-Rex. We're gonna start with the leader taking a shot. That's a miss. The stalwart, stalwart. Ooh, that might be a kill. Nope. And then our rabble, Ray first with the sledgehammer. Nope. And then Bobby. Oh no, okay. Close, we're in close combat. So we're on the close combat column of the chart. D6, four might be another withdrawal. Yeah, four is another attack. So he's in, he, he would move, and then he'll do his stompy stomp. Ooh, or his bitey bite. He almost bit me, one, bit one of me. We'll go to the next turn. We'll check the wind. It's gonna switch back this way. And then we'll do some fire. So this one burns out. We place one next to it in the direction of the wind. And then we roll on the chart, getting a three, which is I think the fire stays in the same. Fire remains, so the fire will stay here. Okay, I think I, I think I had it wrong. I think I had it a little bit wrong. I think I got it now. So we flip over the ones that are lit, place a new one. Then we roll for that fire that is already lit. So that fire, that three that I rolled would be a fire remains, no spread. However, that five or six that I rolled back here would have been another fireplace next to that one. So we're gonna retcon that. Well, no, we're not, because I don't remember which way the wind was blowing. So I, I think that's how that should have played out. I have five action points. I really think I'm only gonna need one of those. One is gonna be to try to light a fire, which we do not do. I need to have the fire marker there. Nothing happened. Uh, everybody else is just gonna be shooting and then attacking. So let's see if we can shoot. Nope. Let's see if we can punch. Ooh, we got almost there. Definitely not. That is a one under the trees. So we'll see what the beast does. Five is a withdrawal. Falling back to that position, four inches. We'll go to the next turn, and I, I got it this time. We're gonna check wind direction. So back this way. This fire token is basically the trees right here. So this one goes out. This is lit. 
and we'll see what happens with it. A one. The fire goes out. Check. Our action points. One is all I need. I'm going to light a fire. Or I'm going to try to light a fire. We do not light a fire. Our companion Sam will shoot at the beast and miss. Those guys will do nothing because they can't get there. Was missile combat where we get a five, which is another withdrawal. Shifts a little bit more east. Six action points. So we're going to definitely double move these guys. So that's going to be four of my action points. And single move my adventure and stalwart. We'll take her shot. Nope. And stalwart will take a shot. Nope. He will swing. Needs a 12. Nope. Bobby will swing. Needing a 12. Nope. Monster is in close combat. Getting a 4. That should be indeed an attack. So he's going to roll 2d6. Looking for an 8 or better. Ooh, that's a 5. Womp womp. Wind remains about the same. Just maybe a little bit more south, but not by much. I have four action points. Let's light a fire. Five or six. Oh, sad face. Or we'll shoot. Ten. And at that point, we will we'll call it. He will bring down the beast. That was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. That was a. Uh, it rolls. It's 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 simple. But in the way that like facilitates just flowing, just one one into the next as you just chase this beast down. That was a lot of fun. I had a great time. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for stopping by hanging out while I played some Tusk from Wessex Games. I hope you have, have an absolutely amazing rest of your day.